Hi guys. So keeping on with the suicide uh, prevention, it, it is really hard to describe markers that we can notice with suicidal people because um, everyone that I've talked to or, or come alongside of who is struggling with suicide, it is actually super unique to each person. Um, but there are a few things that I would like to notice with you about how we can look for warning signs, at risk of suicidal ideation. Um, so the big thing to know is that a person who is suicidal is actually really overwhelmed by grief and trauma. And all of us have endured great grief and trauma this year with the pandemic and with the uh, civil distress in the United States, the, the news, all of the stuff that's going on that is really alarming to our brain. And our brain's tendency, how it works is it's we get up into arousal and then we come down. But when we're continually in this place of, of trauma and grief and fear, our brain has a hard time coming down to baseline. So really we're all at risk right now of having suicidal thoughts. Something to know about suicidal thoughts is actually it's, it's quite a normal thing. And uh, scientifically, biologically, what we know about people is that when we are in a state of arousal or shock, um, our tendencies are to fight, flight, freeze. Some people will throw in the word faint. And so we see something, our alarm bells go off, and it's like, am I gonna fight this? Am I gonna flight this? Or am I gonna freeze? Great example is you think of when you're driving down the road, you see a deer in the ditch. And the deer notices the car coming with speed and its flight reaction kicks in and hopefully the deer is going to run into the field and seek safety but sometimes the deer is alarmed and it runs right into the car and into the fear so this is a great reminder i mean our flight reaction is a real normal part of our dna this is why we want to talk about suicide. There is a high likelihood that the people you love have thought about suicide sometime. This is again where our basic suicide prevention is to notice the people we love, hold space for them, see them, know them, and hear them. Um, so a great clue to somebody struggling with depression, dark thoughts, anxiety, is changed behavior changed demeanor, uh, changed emotional state, changed um, hobbies or activities, just noticing, are there shifts going on for this person that I love? Have they lost joy? Are they, are they avoiding things that they used to really love? Are they avoiding people? These sorts of things. Now these are not always warning signs because oftentimes suicidal people have hopes and they have goals and they are just gonna show up like they normally do um, this is again where we just really want to be talking to the people we love about pain not necessarily about suicide but it is very okay to be explicit and ask explicit questions about how the people we love are doing and if you are concerned please do seek professional help. There are some amazing psychologists, social workers, there's so many good people in Canada, in Alberta. So please do, take it seriously, ask for help, make sure your people are doing okay and make sure you're doing okay because we're all at risk. It's, it's been a bad year. <laughs> um, the, the other thing is really, is that when somebody's in a state of suicidal ideation, uh, there's confused emotion and understanding that confused is is an affect it is an emotion I think is really important because when I put that word into my repertoire with people it just lights go on it's like yeah I'm confused so somebody who is really really struggling with suicidal ideation they don't understand what's going on inside of them there's a great likelihood they don't understand what's going on inside of them. So if we come alongside and we are um, so bold as to say, I understand, or I get it, I've been there, that is extremely offensive. Even if you have had suicidal thoughts or maybe you've been 
have done something to harm yourself. We still don't completely understand someone else's situation. Um, so a, a, a strategy might be to say, I see how confusing this must be for you. All right, guys. I hope this is um, inspiring and helpful for, for you. And these little videos aren't the end-all be-all. So I really, really am urging people during this time of global crisis to seek professional support. You don't have to be alone in this. Um, it's not good for any of us. It's not good for me. And I seek professional support on the regular because I like me. And I hope you like yourself enough to seek out help as well. And if you're not sure if you like yourself, um, that's all the more reason. Thanks so much.